This is Twit. SHJ1. Uh, we might say that we hardly knew ye, but as it turns out, we knew you. We knew ye quite well. The NIST has formally announced that many of what well, well, what many of us have been assuming for some time, the aging original SHA1 cryptographic hashing function is officially being retired. In its place is either SHA2 or SHA3 both which have existed for quite a while and have been in use for a long time. But I did a bit of a double take when I saw that companies have now have, as of the NIST's announcement, companies have until the end of 2030. <laughs> in other words, until t- the beginning of 2031, so another entire eight years from now, to make that replacement. The end of NIST's announcement said, quote, they said, modules that still use SHA-1 after 2030 will not be permitted for purchase by the federal government. Companies have eight years to submit updated modules that no longer use SHA-1 because there's often a backlog of submissions before a deadline we recommend that developers submit their updated modules well in advance so that CMVP has time to respond. Okay, now, a cryptographer might have been a bit bit more explicit and careful in the wording of that mandate. I'd have written modules that are still capable of using SHA-1 after 2030, dot, dot, dot. The reason for the added clarity is that, as we've often talked about, many cryptographic systems obtain robust interoperability by comparing acceptable protocol suites that both ends understand and then negotiating the best and hopefully the most secure among those. But through the years of this podcast, we've examined a great many downgrade attacks where a malicious endpoint identifies that the other end is still offering a no longer considered safe, weak cryptographic protocol. So the sneaky end pretends that it cannot use any of the stronger systems, thus tricking the agreeable other endpoint into establishing a potentially vulnerable connection. So what we want is for all systems to immediately eliminate SHA-1 from their collection of acceptable hashing functions. Absolutely, it should no longer be offered. And, you know, it is a fine point, but for the record, there are still some things you could use SHA-1 for safely if you chose. It would make a fine hash for use in a PBKDF password-based key derivation function, where a hash is is iterated a great many times. But, you know, given that its presence might allow its misuse, removing it altogether would be best. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, Editor-in-Chief of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I join with my co-host to bring you This Week in Space, the latest and greatest news from the final frontier. We talk to NASA chiefs, space scientists, engineers, educators, and artists, and sometimes we just shoot the breeze over what's hot and what's not in space, books, and TV. And we do it all for you, our fellow true believers. So whether you're an armchair adventurer or waiting for your turn to grab a slot in Elon's Mars rocket, join us on This Week in Space and be part of the greatest adventure of all time.